Major Ukrainian cities are surrounded and under constant attack. This is Chernihiv, a city of textile factories, churches and monasteries. Its greatest misfortune to lie on the route of Russia's advance from the north. In the eastern city of Kharkiv, too, people wake daily to scenes of terrible destruction and a fast-rising civilian death toll. Look what Putin is doing. This is a war crime committed against the civilians, against the city of Kharkiv. This city of one and a half million people, most ethnic Russians, is being torn apart by Russian forces for no reason other than that it exists just across the border from Russia in Ukraine. And in the far south, Ukraine's biggest port, Odessa, is under threat too. Here, frantic efforts have been underway for days to build defenses against a possible beach landing. Multiple vessels belonging to Russia's Black Sea fleet hover on the horizon, including landing ships and support craft. Ukraine's military is very much still in this fight, reinforced by supplies of weapons from abroad. They've been able to apply real pressure to the Russian advance, slowing the progress of a vast column of armor, artillery and soldiers heading for the capital, Kiev. Along its route, once sleepy commuter towns lie in ruins, a foretaste of what may be in store for Kiev, the apparent aim to encircle the city and besiege it. From his bunker, under heavy guard, President Volodymyr Zelensky wages a relentless communications campaign, rallying resistance and calling in foreign support. We have been saying this for a long time, that Ukraine is seeking for protections for our own soil and our own people. But such protections have not been provided. European countries assisted us with the waves of migration. However, we should discuss the guarantees that are required to protect our country, our home soil and our people. A second round of talks on Thursday between Russia and Ukraine at a location on the border with Belarus came with low expectations of a breakthrough, but a slim glimmer of hope that they're taking place at all. The Ukrainian government, meanwhile, has called for humanitarian corridors to be set up. And here in the western city of Lviv, volunteers are hard at work processing aid donations, medicines, clothes, food and other essentials for distribution across the country. There is a humanitarian crisis erupting on multiple fronts, not just the internally displaced who've left everything behind in a scramble for safety across the country's borders, as more than a million have done since the invasion began, but also huge populations in urban centres trapped terrified and desperate for help. Civilian morale will vary now in a population increasingly terrorized. There'll be desperation in some places, determination in others. A spontaneous rendition of the national anthem at that aid station in Lviv. It is becoming ever clearer that the struggle is not just for personal survival, but for the survival of the nation as a whole. Jonah Hull, Al Jazeera, Lviv.